Silver Tongue Devil here, and today, as a little bit of a change of pace, I thought, let's rank those arrows. I'm sure some of you watching will have seen my Missiles in a Minute series. I did give some opinions there. However, things do change. So I thought it'd be a good idea to make myself up a little table on Tier Maker and go through what I like and don't like and the whys. Everything that I'm going to be talking about here is going to be based on season three main gameplay. Also note we're looking at this from the perspective of 100% complete. So all the upgrades, all the quiver capacities, all the everything for all of these arrows. I'll explain a little bit more on the ranking of these arrows as we go along, but it should be fairly self-explanatory. So let's get on with it. So I figure it's easy enough for us to do these alphabetically, so let's start with Azure's Fury. Now, although this one is quite pathetically weak and doesn't have much in the way of quiver capacity, it's one saving grace it is that its effects do at least stagger enemies. That staggering can buy you those seconds, so even without doing a lot of damage, it can have its uses. Not a great arrow, average at best. With Ball Lightning, I'm going to lump Ball Lightning 1 and Ball Lightning 3 together. This is just to cut down on the amount of arrows that we're looking at. Talking mainly about Ball Lightning 3, I would definitely rate it as a great arrow. This one can kick out a ton of damage given enough time. On its own, it's good for room clearances. And I am actually starting to find that it combos very nicely with some other arrows. You'll have to have a look at my masters in a minute for that. Right, so on on with Barrage of Needles. Again, we're looking at all of the Barrage of Needles. Single, ricochet and double. So this is probably the one with the biggest change. Previous to knowing about the point scoring strategy with it, I probably would have rated this as an average arrow. Now I know what we're thinking, fantastic arrow, it's amazing, get it in the quiver, points, 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 points. However, I am actually going to drop this one down to great arrow status. Reason being is as I'm reserving the top slot for things that are always good. You'll see those arrows come up a little bit later on. Granted, there are situations where Barrage of Needles can be really helpful if you find yourself swarmed or you've got things very close and you're using something like the bow. You can then gain that punch that the crossbow has by standard at close range. Still, great arrow status is great. There's a nice curve with Barrage in that you are using Barrage of Needles or Barrage of Needles of Ricochet to begin with. You'll soon come across a double Barrage of Needles. You'll always want to take double Barrage of Needles because it is just better in every way. Not just the ammo capacity, but also that double shot. And so to get a final thought in there before we move on, save this becoming the Barrage of Needles show. For garnishing score, there is no greater arrow. However, it becomes a luxury and also a liability at those much higher cycles. So next up we have Cataclysm. We've got the 1, the 3 and the 5. I'll briefly touch on Ricochet and Cataclysms as well in respect to the fact that they're just another liability arrow. They are fun to use but they're very short on ammunition and you can't do a lot with them really. Now you'll see I'm slowly creeping Cataclysm up the rankings as I'm talking and I think we all know where this one's going. You get Cataclysms in the quiver. So again, this is another one of those arrows where you always want to make your way to the top end. You always want cat fives over anything else. Take ones or threes if they're on offer and you think you're going to need them, but fives are where we're heading. Now, why do I consider them essential? In a word, it's versatility. The damage that they can kick out is huge, which makes them great for those bosses and also for those high HP individuals. The explosive radius means that they're also a really good arrow for taking care of the groups. In a pinch, say you're being mobbed, you can drop them at your feet. At the very least, that will stack the enemies around you, will probably cause the slow time and can be the difference between you capitalizing or escaping. And we've also got to talk about them being the key to the gatekeeper that is Anakin. During the early days, I, like many others, used Cataclysm spam on Anakin to actually get past him and allow me to get to higher cycles. As mine, and I dare say your gameplay evolves, you will find that you won't need those early doors. However, you will need them for that big finish on Anakin in those higher cycles. Many, many uses for this arrow. Get it in the quiver. Now, next up, I believe we have Cupid's Wrath. So the homing effect on this one is good. The explosive damage and radius that it does is good. However, it will get outstripped at those higher cycles. There, it's just not doing the damage needed. However, we are going to slightly overlook that and this one just scrapes it into being a great arrow. When you first get it, it actually seems quite powerful and it does a lot of work for you. 
whilst the training wheels are on it's perfectly fine to use this arrow however you will find that the further you get into it you just won't need it anymore but until the time that you do not need it I'd consider it a great arrow. It does have a little utility against some of the bosses in a pinch. It's not bad against Asmodeus as you'll have seen in one of my latest videos. One little thing that I will drop about Cupid's Wrath is kills with it count towards your Cataclysm kills, the 666 that you need for that to upgrade it to its maximum damage capacity. So if you're after any nuggets from this video, there's one. So moving on to Curse of God. Now, Curse of God, I've got a little bit of a problem with because its damage does not scale very well. You can get use out of it in Paradise Lost and maybe across the first cycle or two, but its biggest problem is that if it doesn't kill enemies, it then doesn't spread, which then means that you may not even get a single kill out of a single arrow. It can be very good against cupids if deployed correctly, however being particularly good against one enemy in the game isn't good enough. Thankfully it's an easy unlock and even easier upgrades, so once you've got it and done with it you don't have to touch it again. Oh divine sight you are a bad arrow. The vast majority of time you fire off a divine sight it's going to hit the body. It very rarely goes for those headshots. Because of that and a lack of ammunition, whilst you're at this training stage or learning stage, whilst you're needing homing arrows to deal with things that you can't hit, Cupid's Wrath is a much better arrow. Divine Sight's only thing that it's got going for it is it's a really easy unlock just by bopping a Cupid with your shield. It should come as no surprise that I'm a real big fan of Hail of Arrows. With a little bit of training with it, it can become a really good arrow. And if you get this in the hands of a decent crossbow user, oh, it's very good. You can hose a lot of damage out with it. It's never going to make essential arrow status because in essence it's doing something that you can already do just a little bit quicker. And you're having to waste a quiver slot for it. I personally find this one a lot of fun to use on both the bow and the crossbow. Great arrow. And now we have Hand of God, no messing around with this arrow, you get this in the quiver. When you get this arrow it changes everything about the game. If you have this arrow and you're not using it then you are doing it wrong. I would personally rate this arrow as the best arrow in the game. It has so much potential, so many uses. Its key feature of just slowing everything down within its bubble works at every stage, works at every cycle, and works in nearly any situation that you can throw it in. I think the best way that I can sum it up without preaching all day about all the different uses it has is that it really extenuates you as a player. When everything around you within that bubble is slower, it's as if you are doing everything faster. Your rate of fire, your movement, you're dodging huge combo potential with nearly every other arrow in the game if you can't use this yet learn how to use it and get it in the quiver moving on to hellfire is another great arrow in my opinion its lack of ammunition does hurt it a little bit the flaming damage over time does make up for that the fact that it's a light arrow can make it even twitchier and a little bit harder to control than hail of arrows, but it's still almost as good. Again, same as hail, you can get a really good tune out of hellfire on the crossbow. Another great arrow if you ask me. So, holy light, what do we do with you? Well, you're going straight into bad arrow status. If there was a reliable way to trigger the 400% damage addition, which is, I think, a bug, then this would probably be a great arrow, if not almost an essential arrow. It would allow you to get past probably Anakim 10 quite easily. But as is, it doesn't stick around long enough. It doesn't do enough damage to justify its placement. Also, having the flight path of a heavy arrow means that you can't even fire it over much of a distance. This is a bad arrow. Little known fact about Incursion, when it is upgraded, it is actually the most powerful single explosive arrow in the game. It does a ton of damage individually. However, Cataclysm is just better. This one can do the job of Cataclysm if you're really sure or not finding Cataclysms. However, as soon as you do find it, 
get it replaced. The lack of ammunition for me is what drops it down to an average arrow. I like the idea of the Pestilence Arrow, however its execution in this game is so lacklustre it's unreal. You can get kills with it against very weak enemies in maybe cycle 1, but other than that I really don't see a use for this. This is a bad arrow. A couple of things that save it from being bottom tier is that it's an easy unlock, it's an easy upgrade, and I suppose you could soften up an area before attacking it. Again though, not very good. Ugh, shrapnel blast. Ugh, why are you even in the game? I cannot find a use or a reason for this arrow to exist. You pick this up in a dream, you better wake up and apologise. It's a ridiculously late game unlock. On hit, its secondary effect does little to no damage. The spread is absolutely rubbish and random at the best of times. And it even has the audacity to share the same arrow model and quiver amount as Barrage and Needles 2. After testing this one extensively, the only other time that I've ever picked it up is by accident replacing something useful. Get this out, the game is rubbish. I feel tainted just talking about it. Thankfully, we've got Tempest up next. Now, Tempest is a good arrow. Hell of a lot of ammunition, has a lot of versatility in that it can take out multiple enemies in that kind of railgun effect. It's got very good range as well. I'd go as far as to say that it is a great arrow. It'll provide you a quick and easy way to deal with those skybound threats. It will output its maximum damage regardless of range or draw strength. Fantastic for making quick work of Gabriel. Just make sure you are getting headshots with it by aiming slightly higher than you think you should. It also actually covers the crossbow's weakness which is damage over distance. So that's nice too. So with all that said, giving it a glowing report, why is it not considered essential? Why is it not always in the quiver? Much like Cupid's Wrath, it's not doing a massive amount more than what you can already do. It's another one of those arrows that's perfectly acceptable to have whilst you've got the training wheels on. However, you will graduate past this the further you get into the game. Could this next arrow be the big shock? Something that I'm doing that nobody's figured out? Something that I would definitely put in as you pick this up in a dream, you wake up and apologise. This arrow is terrible and doesn't have a practical use in any situation. Again, I'm going to lump both of the volley arrows together. 3 and 5 both have the same ammunition capacity, so for that reason alone you always want to take the volley 5 over the 3. Although it does have some uses, is really, really good for executing orphans, one shot in them. Same with those huge helpful enemies that you can get close to. Although I would only actually rate it as an average arrow because past that it doesn't really do much more than a normal arrow would do. A lot of the time that spread just sends arrows flying off into the distance and not really doing anything. As far as wildfire is concerned, we're gonna put one and five into the same little picture here. Now talking about wildfire five, it can be used like volley in that it can dish out a heck of a lot of damage to say something like an orphan or something with a huge health pool if you can get them all in the head. So it does have a little bit of utility. Wildfire 1 on the other hand I haven't found much use for. Now all arrows in the game that have the fire effect actually have a change in their trajectory. They're all classed as say a light arrow which means that they don't curve as much as you fire them off. This does mean that you don't have to aim off as much to hit things in the distance. However, that breeds a problem in itself in that you are having to adjust your long range aim and you're limited in ammunition. This can make your extreme range sniping easier. However, if you're anything like me, you'll probably send many, many shots over the head before you actually hit it. And I personally would much rather train myself to hit things at those sort of distances on a trajectory that I've got unlimited ammunition of, i.e. the vanilla arrow. The burning effect for both these arrows is nice, it just doesn't last long enough to really put across much damage. They're not doing that much more than a standard arrow, which is why I would rate them as average. Last two, up next we have Winter's Bite. Now, there's probably not going to be any surprises here either. Winter's Bite, you get this in the quiver. Again, I've lumped the single shot and the three times version together on the same picture. This situation's a little different in that I would always recommend you go for the higher times version of an arrow. As far as Winter's Bite is concerned, the single shot is what we want. 
Reason being, it has more ammunition, and the three shot has a tendency of only really hitting the enemy that you're aiming for, and won't really hit anything off to the left and right either. It's worth noting here that multiple hits with the same arrow won't stack the effects, however they will refresh the timer on them, so to speak. It is without a doubt an essential arrow at the higher cycles, you will need this eventually. I personally shied away from this arrow for way too long, I couldn't see the hype until I started getting to the likes of Anakim 6 Plus. You want to get past those high level Anakims? This is another one of those keys. The arrow won't do all the work for you, however it does do absolutely massive amounts of damage to bosses. And it's also really good on those high health pool enemies and on most can have the added effect of freezing them in place. And I think probably the best feature of it is that that damage scales. So it doesn't matter what cycle you are using it on, it is doing huge amounts of damage over time. And up last, and by no means least, is Wrath of God. Wrath of God is considered the nuke of your arrow arsenal, and with good reason. If you can use it correctly, which is to arc it past as many enemies as you can and bury in something far away, it can put a lot of work in for you. No single shot of any other arrow is better than clearing the skies of cupids. The things that drop it down for me from essential status to great arrow status is its effects don't stagger, its damage does drop off quite badly over time, so you'll only be using this for so long, and it's also unfortunately very short in the ammunition department. And there we have it, those are my current thoughts and opinions of the arrows in the game. Do however take into consideration that I've had to temper this based on my level of play and not anybody else's. Agree? Disagree? Think you know better? Or that I've missed something? Start that conversation in the comments. And finally I'll leave as much information and links as I can in the description for the video so that you can get onto TMAKI yourself and make use of all the bits and pieces that I've put together.